Hey everyone, in this video we are going to set up NeoVim for Python development. By the end, your configuration will include auto-formatting, real-time linting, an LSP integration for features like auto-completions, hover information and code navigation, and a super handy debugger. Now I'm a really big fan of using the kickstart starter configuration, so we're not going into all of the details here. Instead, I would like to show you the changes that I made to it in order to add Python support. If that sounds good to you, follow me into the terminal. If you have an existing NeoVim configuration, you might want to back it up first. Mine lives in the .config directory, and here I'm just gonna move the nvim directory to nvim backup. Now let's head over to the kickstart nvim github repository, and here if we scroll down a bit, you can find installation instructions. In my case, I'm running on a Mac, so I'm just gonna copy this command right here. I'm going back into the terminal, paste it here and run it. This is all that's needed to get the kickstart starter configuration. Now of course in order to follow along you also need to have NeoVim installed. Just to confirm I'm running on NeoVim version 0.10.1. Now that the config has been downloaded let's go into the nvim directory and open up NeoVim. Now the lazy UI is showing us all the plugins that got installed. We can close it with Q. And now using colon E, let's open up the init.lua file, which is the main configuration file of this config. And here I would like to make a few edits. I'm going to search for the auto format configuration. Auto formatting is handled by a plugin called Conform and um, we're going to replace it with another plugin. So let's get rid of this configuration here. And let's go to the bottom of the file and go up a little bit. Here we have a section that shows optional plugins that already come with the starter config and we can just uncomment these lines for the debug plugin and another one for NeoTree which will give us a nice file tree which is really handy for this video. Also a bit further down let's uncomment this line. This will import custom plugin configurations because we're going to add a few. Looking good, now I'm going to type zz to exit out of the file and save all the settings. If you're confused by anything that just happened, I made another video going into my entire NeoVim configuration from scratch that is also based on this kickstart starter repository. You might find it more useful if you're completely new to configuring NeoVim. With that said, let's now add auto formatting and real-time linting to our config. For this purpose, we need a plugin called NullLS. NullLS allows for the seamless integration of non-LSP tools, like formatters and linters, to function within NeoVim as though they were native LSP features. Simply put, this plugin allows us to manage formatters and linters within NeoVim. To set up NullLS in Kickstart, let's open up NeoVim again, and now we can press backslash. This will open up new tree, which is this really nice file tree here. Inside of the Lua directory, we have one more directory called custom, and in here we have an init.lua file where we can add our custom plugin configuration. So any additional plugins we want to add, they go here. Now I will just quickly paste my nullls configuration and then walk you through it step by step. So in this return, I'm just going to paste it. Let me quickly close NeoTree to get more visibility. Now the plugin is officially called nullls. It used to be called nullls, but the creator archived the repository because he didn't have the capacity to maintain it anymore. And nullls is a fork of the original nullls. We're also going to need nullls extras. Not all formatters and linters are included in the base package. To get access to them, we need to add this plugin as well. Then we have Mason here. Mason is a plugin that ensures that all the tools that we need are installed. So a bit further down here, you can see a snippet where we use Mason and we pass in a list of the formatters and linters that we would like to have, and then it automatically installs them. Speaking of the formatters and linters, first you see we have Rough. Rough is a modern Python formatter and linter written in Rust. It's super fast and it's a drop-in replacement for Black, Flake 8, iSort, and it also can format Jupyter Notebooks. So it's kind of an all-in-one tool, which is super fast and modern, and I highly recommend using it. Next up we have Prettier. Prettier can format a wide range of different file types, including JSON, JAML, and Markdown, because chances are that if you're working with Python, you're not only working with Python files, but maybe you also have some configuration files or some data that you're also working with. 
Finally, I added shell format to the list. This is a shell script formatter, so if you ever find yourself writing a shell script, this can come in quite handy. A bit further down here, we are actually setting up the formatters. The built-in formatters and linters come from this nullls built-ins module, whereas the formatters that are not included in the base package come from this nullls formatting module. In this case, rough was not included in the base one. Now, rough has two main components. Rough consists of the rough linter and the rough formatter. To the rough linter, we pass an extra argument, extend select i. This will add the functionality of sorting imports, so it becomes a replacement for isort. In the second line here, we have the rough formatter, and this, as you would expect, formats the rest of the Python file. For prettier, we are also passing an extra configuration option, which is the file types that we want to apply it to. In this case, we say we want to use it for JSON, JAML, and Markdown files. For shell format, we are also passing an extra argument, which is this i4, and this means that it should format shell scripts with four spaces as indentation. Now let's have a look at this last section here. This is a snippet that I got from the wiki page of the nonls github repository, and what this does is that it automatically formats a file when you save it. Okay, now let's actually save this and see this in action. So I'm gonna create a python file right here example.py and here I'm going to paste some really poorly formatted Python code. What this script does is not really important. It basically fetches some weather data from some OpenAPI and then prints it to the terminal. But what I want to focus on here is rough. So you can already see that rough is giving us some diagnostics. So we have some unused imports like daytime and OS. And then you can see we have a lot of style issues, like we have missing spaces around the comma and the equal sign, use single quote instead of double quotes, a lot of indentation issues, and also some missing spaces between functions and stuff like that. So now let's see what happens if we simply save this file. And now you can see that Ruff automatically removed the unused imports. It also sorted the imports and everything is nicely formatted. So I find this super neat and it has saved me so much time already. So Ruff is really powerful, but it is lacking a few functionalities that a full-fledged LSP client has, like autocompletions, hover information and code navigation abilities. For example, if I hover over HTTP connection here and I want to know what this is, normally I can just press Shift K and it will give me the information, but here I will just see no information available. In order to provide such behaviors, Ruff is meant to be used alongside another LSP client. The most common ones for Python are PyWrite and PyLSP. So let's set this up next. Let's go into the main init.lua file again. And here I would like to search for local servers. So this is a Lua table where all the LSP clients that are used inside of this configuration are defined. So you can already see that we have Lua LS configured here. And there are also a couple more examples of LSPs that you could use. There's PyWrite that I already mentioned. I used to use PyWrite, but I had some memory issues with it. I've also tried based PyWrite, which is supposed to be an improved version of it. But in the end, I stuck with PyLSP because it has been working just fine for me, especially when combined with Ruff. Now let's go down a little bit and paste my PyLSP config right above the Lua LS config. PyLSP has a couple of optional plugins like Black, MyPy, iSort and so on. However, we already have Ruff which is taking care of sorting of imports, formatting and that kind of stuff. So here we just want to make sure that all the optional plugins are explicitly disabled. Now let's again save this and reopen NeoVim. Now the Python LSP server is installing. And now let's open up the example.py file that we created again. Let's head over to the HTTP connection and press Shift K again. And now you can see we get a pop-up message telling us the input arguments and the expected types. Also, if I press GD now, it takes me directly to the definition of this object. And if I press Ctrl T, I can go back. Another feature that's now available is autocompletions. So if I just start typing some Python syntax, we are getting some suggestions here. This completes the LSP setup, now let's also add a debugger to our config. For this purpose, let's head back into our init.lua file, and first here we want to search for nvim tree sitter. Here it is. 
Treeset is a plugin that allows NeoVim to better understand the syntax of our code, which is important for debugging. And here we want to make sure that Python support is installed by adding it to this ensure installed list. Okay, let's save this and now let's open up the debug config file. I want to keep this video concise, so I'm not going over the debug config of Kickstart in detail. However, if you're interested in that, I would encourage you to read through all these comments here. They explain everything really, really well. Now to add a Python debugger to this setup, we need to go down to where it says add your own debuggers here. And you can already see there's an example of a Go debugger. So let's paste this one, nvimdub python. This is a plugin for a Python debugger. Then you can see here you have the different shortcuts that are already configured, mainly using the F keys. Let's go down a bit more to where it says ensure installed. Here we already have 12, which I think is a Go debugger. And here let's also add Python. And then we need to go down a bit further even to where we have the setup of the debuggers. So here, just like we are setting up the Go debugger, we also need to say require DAP Python and call the setup method. And those should be all the changes that are required here. So let's again save this and let's reopen NeoVim to install. All right, NVim dub got installed. And now let's open up our example Python file again. As I already mentioned, this file fetches some weather data. So if we go down a bit into the main function, let's actually set a breakpoint here using leader B. Next to the line numbers, you can now see the breakpoint. Now this should stop our execution right after fetching the data and before parsing and displaying it. Now I can enter debug mode by pressing F5. We can just run the file or provide some additional arguments. You have a few options here. Let's just go with file for now. And this opens up this beautiful debugger UI. You can do a lot of things here. One thing that I find really useful is inspecting the local and global variables. For example, we fetched the weather data and it's now stored in this weather data dictionary and we can expect the raw values before they're being passed. I want to cut it here because this is mainly a setup guide for how to set up Python in NeoVim and not so much on how to use a debugger. But if you want to get a better idea of all the shortcuts and functionalities that are available in this UI, I would highly encourage you to read through the documentation, especially the comments in the kickstart debug configuration. So there you have it. With a few minor tweaks, we were able to make Kickstart Python ready. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time for more.